and we uh, welcome to Goth Therapy, everyone. So uh, here it's we a go. It's a little crowded um, in here, though. There's it's a little. <laughs> it's like a group <laughs> session, huh? Yeah, there's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, we we don't know where this is going, but um, I just can we can we the change the name to Got Group? That's got a, group. It's a Got Group therapy. Uh, Maybe after this, need therapy. It's yeah, really this is a, <laughs> yeah, yeah a pod gang. This is a gang <laughs> podcast, I think, of some sort. It is. So everybody doing okay? Doing good. How are we doing? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I tell you what, I ate my weight in fruitcake. Nice. Yeah, do you, do people still give fruitcake? I've got. Uh, uh, that's all we eat on the holidays. We're a fruitcake family. <laughs> My extended yeah, family. It's a lot of nothing but fruitcake. Really? That's <laughs> just fruitcake. Wonderful. Man. So um, I have no idea about this, but I, I had uh, I, it was sneaky of me to uh, invite people in and not tell them what's uh, what was up with anything. So we were hoping for gang members. Well, every, <laughs> yeah, gangs. I told him it was a gang. We we're going to have a gang podcast. <laughs> signs, and know? this is kind of a gang, you know. Yeah. So maybe that's what it, what it is. And my thought was, why should this be different from any other podcast? Any other? <laughs> I mean, I never know what we're going to do or what we're going to say, and so uh, you know. And then an hour later. We still don't. We well, still don't know what. Yeah, happened, what but, just but we, happened. we've exactly. we've killed an hour somehow. Yeah. We've done I, that. I much. hope at some point I say some things. I hope my mom doesn't hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> almost every. That's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah, that's guaranteed. Yeah, yeah that's we're it. we're uh, we're real fortunate to have Dr. Conklin in uh, today. Uh, Hi, he's, Dr. Uh, Conklin. He's uh, <laughs> he's refereeing this match, and uh, is he executive producer? He's in the producer's chair. Right? Uh, no, I, I he see. cannot produce. No, I don't no, he's. Equipment. He's a radio voiceover guy. He can't produce. Yeah, is, that, is that a reference to some sort of <laughs> disorder? Maybe something's not working? You see, I wanted other people to experience what I experience on Every a weekly week, basis. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, get a, people get, get a taste of out. this. I think my how well, uh, stuck to the table. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Hackett, how are you, sir? I'm good. How was your Christmas? How was it everything? Was quiet. Very oh, quiet. Was we just kind of sat back in the, uh, you know, we... View. We had Christmas early, had the kids in, and then uh, kind of just sat around with uh, one group, one family group for oh, Christmas. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, no, you guys had to celebrate a few things a little early to get everybody on the schedule and get yeah, everybody in one place. It's right? just tough. It's tough getting them all together. But uh, we got to see just about everybody. Okay. All right. That's yeah, it. Sure, that's cool. Good, yeah, so. The, family the out there. New Year's thing is going to be happening. We're going to have all the grandkids over. So uh, oh, we're okay. already that's going to happen New Year's Day. So we're planning. I'm, I'm right. coming yeah. over. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Doctor Rose will be there. Yeah, well, that's good. He how, can help. He can help sit <laughs> and give watch. Him a tour. How many grandchildren are we talking? Well, uh, it'll be. Uh, let's see. Thomas and Laney and Kennedy will be there, and then if Kai makes a scene, that's four of them. Wow. And then we've got another one on the way. So, Beautiful. Uh, Good. Uh, Sorry, make some adjustments there. So somebody's in. Oh, another on the way too. You know, yeah, well, yeah, somebody, so, somebody yeah, does not yeah, have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so somebody is fecund, as they yeah, say. That's right. Fecund. Having there plenty, is, plenty of production in the Hackett clan for there sure. There is fecundity. Yeah. Well, that, that's your, uh, that's, uh, that's really exciting. So yeah. New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, New Year's Day. I think okay. they're going right. to celebrate New Year's Eve at the house, and then uh, everybody's going to make the scene. And if we have some good weather, we'll do some fishing and camping. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to know what this weather. Yeah. Gonna gonna be yeah. Doctor Rose, how are you, sir? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, we All had right, uh, sounds good. What happened? We had a little controversy over the uh, Christmas break. Uh, oh. Our family often we do this where we uh, each of us make our own version of the nativity scene. Right. And my son made some folks upset when he made a uh, nativity scene out of potted meat. Oh, <laughs> apparently oh. a uh, a Jesus baby out of p- uh, deviled ham. Deviled really ham. Sense. That would be <laughs> really wrong. appropriate. That would really be... bothered some people. So. Oh my goodness, uh, yeah, Jeff! Not... I don't know how you respond to that. <laughs> you but, can't uh, respond to you that. You can't no. respond yeah, to that. Exactly. Yeah, no. but uh, but hopefully uh, people. I would have gone it. with Vienna sausage because you know if, if it's the right size nativity scene, that's that's. <laughs> Uh, you know, you you're making people uncomfortable around here already <laughs> as is at the start of this podcast and uh I don't know if that's your job oh, or not. Man. But uh Jeff, how about you, man? How was the holiday? Oh, I was good. Good. We got out the Harleys, we rode. There's two Jeffs on yeah, the screen, by the way. You'll see Jeff uh in uh tandem there. Yeah, Jeff and Twin. Jeff feedback. <laughs> Jeff and Jeff Jeff's went, multiverse. Yeah, Jeff Jeff, 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 Jeff went riding. So. One's a little <laughs> delayed when he talks, but other than that. So yeah, Jeff and I went uh, bike riding yesterday yes, we and did. Uh, trying to get back and get in a little exercise. And evidently, uh, I'm paralyzed from the uh, <laughs> shoulders down. But 
we were all good. We had a quiet holiday, too, so I'll throw that out there. As you quiet as good. You said you quiet did a lot of thing. things working on your app. Yeah, I'm actually working on the app. Is that your abs or your app? N- uh, both. Okay. <laughs> but more on the app. I've got, the I've got an app. Bring in my app. No. <laughs> yeah, we're trying, to, we're trying to get some things going for uh, this uh, studio and all the things we're doing. So we've just uh, – we're almost to the point of finishing the uh, Apple, the iOS app, and uh, we've got a guy – Named Jay in Bangladesh, who's helping with the uh, Jay Android. In Bangladesh. <laughs> yes. He's yes. on the so line. That's how that works. Is that Bangladesh, Alabama? <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's uh, across the sea there. That so. really is. But he's helping us out. He's a programmer with more in, an, in Android, uh, in the Android world, which mm-hmm. is um, Windows based thing. So Have you I, seen I need him? a little help you know with he, that. I'd rather not do it. I can really do it exist? probably. But I'm, yeah, I'm wondering, like, what is he like? Could he be some sort of, like, I don't know. He's a uh, digital programmer, so he really? is a coder. He codes coder. and things like that. Now, how do you yeah. know he's not AI? Just, uh, just yeah. kind of AI <laughs> yeah. unit over in Bangladesh. So I'm saying, well, I'm I'm a, I'm a little concerned that he might, you know, uh, shipped in via coming in from Bangalore sort. via Bangladesh, and it's uh, you know just a, a server somewhere you're interacting with. Yeah, it isn't that what we've talked well about? Could yeah. be. So. It very well could be. That was on one of those shows. Wasn't yeah, it? that's I mean, right. Trying to say Abraham out. George show. He talked about all that crazy. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the uh, so. uh, I don't know the. The reality to come, I guess. It's going to be a uh, – the future is coming very fast. Matter of fact, there's a title of a book we're going to have to read at some point. Uh, the future is faster than you think, uh, something to that effect. Okay. So we have to put that faster back in there. Faster than you think, yeah. Dr. Rose, this is your show. This is God Therapy. We've interrupted everything so far. That well, you know, we brought got, in the guys here to help out. I, I'm going to have to because I normally say this. Yes, you do. That sounds like my wedding night. <laughs> what what part of what I just the future's said? Future's fast. Coming too fast. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I needed to. Do we do we do we need to hear this, <laughs> Doctor Hackett? Yeah, do we? Bada bing. Yeah, this is what we do here, and um, I usually don't survive these things very well for some reason. But I well, thought but I'd I know give it a we, shot. We, we had a topic. I don't know if it if it yeah. fits because we have. We have two other people here who may also have some other ideas. There may be some things that we have other fertile minds. Yes. And so there could be something in there Well, that, that, that might – that this, this is a show that in some way should touch a little bit on mental health or um, – or thoughts about uh, things emotional and right. so there, right. there could, we, we could be a bit of a potpourri can i say that potpourri that's is that a good word. yeah you that's can a it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair word yeah. um and, and i have a to to uh just to add that i have sort of tipped them off a little bit i don't think they've done the reading on it but they got the general well, topic but we also area, had an idea so we had an, and i thought and it would, it, it, would it would it might stroke that. just enough controversy you know, and that, that it might, and that it, there could be an audience out there to hear our two cents on 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 the topic we'd sort of considered. Right. But so we can make this a little right. open. Right. right. Yeah. So so, um, so you send me a topic during tech for text, and I get the text, and I look at it, and you just got, is this podcast material? Question mark. And uh, yeah, yeah. And there almost wasn't any nudity. Almost ninety nine percent is no. <laughs> by the way, yeah. there so, was no nudity in this one. I no, thought there that was, was no, no nudity made, pictures, uh, but. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens, and I, I just want to apologize up front to all the listeners, and of course Jeff and Tom uh, here in the studio with us before we march forward. Because there's no nudity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah. I could be naked from the waist down. You wouldn't know. Okay. Uh, the I'm old, uh, I'm, and I'm on that side. note, you don't need <laughs> pants. So, so on that note, what is the topic? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, I, uh, <laughs> Dr. Hackett is asking for a little structure and order guess. around this place. Yes, so. he is. Well, the, the, the topic was that there was an article in Salon that said that, um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but... Um, Lots of folks are, are really interested in these Hallmark Chris, Christmas movies. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. And they a lot are of interest at our house, right? And so, yeah. so, and, and they, they are a certain formula, and that people watch them continuously. And even uh, there's a Hallmark movie that's non-Christmas, and also a sort of formulaic and whatnot. And and people, they're sort of like the cinematic version of a comfort food. And right. so people are Got often it. consuming these things. They, they, uh, uh, the, the, the audience is typically women. I don't want to be sexist, but I do believe yes. it leans in that direction. Leans there's toward an, that. There's yes, an estrogen factor somehow it's pertinent. Women and men who are napping. 
Yeah, it's so nap epic to the show. And so <laughs> well, they're good the, to nap to, you know. You get a moment. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you, yeah, you every so. day, actually. So you get that <laughs> moment's, so moment's you, peace there. You could be our expert because I confess I've not seen a single one. Oh, Okay. But, I, but, I, I but have, you can talk about what you well, imagine I've read some them to synopsis. be. Well, synopsis. Mm-hmm. What is the plural of synop- synopsis? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Synopsis. Okay. Synopsis. okay I've read some synopsis, and um, so I have some idea. But the article said that um, that Hallmark movies, especially Christmas Hallmark movies, are fascist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I have uh, immediate reaction to that well, what, what, because I, I just want to say, and I don't want to set the tone or do anything like that, or. or uh, Move away from the topic, but the word fascist is a powerful word and should be used cautiously, do you not think? And that all of these terrible words that people are just flying around and they're labeling people this and that. Traitor. Traitor. Everyone's yeah, a traitor see, now. Everyone's okay. committed treason. treason. See, okay. that's, those okay. are those kind of yeah. words. And, and I yeah. think just using the word fascist is treason. See, now, okay. they, now I've used my power word, you know. This is, oh, oh, we're looking for power words. Yeah, well, that's right. I got you a power word. All right, wait. So the point being that, hey, wait, are we really have to go that far to that extreme? Once you go all the way down that road, then what's left after that? That's my question. So that was my, my so little just, sidebar so you, here so on you, what this you, is you about. You guys tell if I'm hearing you right. So you're saying that the – that um, whatever you want to do, if we're going to talk about these films, we may want to stray away from such words as fascism because that, A, may be at, at, at best just misusing the, the word, the definition. Mis- misusing the word, but, or, uh, but alarmist, and, and, alarmist. And, and kind of uh, blowing things out of proportion beyond the reality of what mm-hmm. they were trying to, to say. That's now, it. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, is there some words uh, less? Right. Let uh, me just say, this is still exactly how a fascist would talk. Am I wrong? Right <laughs> okay, now, he's... There you go. <laughs> he's just, see, he's I, really Dr. Hackett, help I me have out a, I have a Would question about this whole thing, because because the the, That's uh, what a the word would the say. word fascist <laughs> yeah yes. is, is sort of a loaded term yes. yeah yeah I'm trying to say word it, treason in the United States treason is treason you're against is up dumb there. Yeah. apple pie you don't like puppies whatever <laughs> so my question is I like puppy pie but <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right and I love how it we goes <laughs> to your notes too which we <laughs> remain uh, see, see and and here's the thing we we're going to the question now before a uh, doctor. Um, uh, well, it, it's, it's in a way we're moving fast and furious with this, and I think that's okay. So, Dr. Hackett, ask your question. Okay, my question is it's a therapy question, and it really relates to got therapy and mental health and that kind of thing. Uh-oh. Are we in, p- presently in a landscape in the United States that is sort of where – we all suffer a little bit from borderline personality. It's all about drama. Fascist, traitor, uh, you're yeah. sick, you, you're a hater, you're this, you're that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you, That's, you, you don't go toward the, the actual facts of what has been said, but you, you immediately label it something really extreme. I think you're absolutely right, Doc. Hackett, you're right on target with that. See, I just did it. And that may be, that right? May, I just that, did it, right? That may be, yeah, that's right. He's using those <laughs> mental health words again. Watch him. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, we're going way too far. There's not a civil conversation. We don't even use the, the idea in mental health has been there a long time. It's uh, eye messages. I feel this way. No, it's always you with the pointed <laughs> finger around uh-huh. there. And in those cases – we are civilization just dropped down a notch. Well, or two you, you, here's the thing, and you, you may be completely right because th- there there is a cultural climate in which we exist, and uh, it, there there there's always a historical context we should take into consideration, and now is certainly different than then. However, particularly on the political spectrum, we often think that we live in an era where. We're no longer civil politically and whatnot. Yeah, this but is the worst of There's a wonderful book, and I can't they, think of a name, but the, he goes back in time and he shows old political adverts from the turn of the century. Yeah. And right. people are calling each other's mothers' names. <laughs> right. I mean, it was remarkably uncivil. In fact, the arguments made is, is actually it was much worse. And I wonder when you, when you, you know, because, because, um, yeah, right. people were in duels. They would shoot yeah, and people, kill each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Andrew Jackson killed a couple of people, you know. And so, <laughs> and all in a day's work. Right? <laughs> and yeah, was, yeah. That's, that's how it works. In yeah. one of his duels, he made an appoint to wear a giant coat. <laughs> like he would wear like, 
I, I learned mm. this in Tennessee history. This was this okay. Was, okay. Had to, when in class, we had to learn this. Andrew Jackson was popular in the state I'm from. Oh you know, yeah, Tennessee. Else. Yeah, it's all about but, it. So I think we could be related. But the um, uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, is there something about now that makes it more uh, um, emotionally labile, or there more splitting? That, that in some ways gets to the point of the article because if the article overreaches, what I think it attempts to do is it attempts to be able to look at the way we think about things and the art that we consume, particularly popular culture, and how it may be good or bad for us. And if, you know, I guess in a way a Hallmark movie, at least on the surface, is the opposite of borderline, right? Because it is Mm. innocuous Mm. Mm -hmm. to the point of of numbingness. numbingness. Girl, boy gets girl, boy loses girl. Right. They kiss at the end. Every show (laughs) is the same. Okay, so so literally it would be the opposite. has watched these movies, as a matter of fact. I I don't think he's been napping. Yeah, yeah, he's got one eye. He's got one eye open. I'm telling all myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think That's how that works. I'm a romantic. Okay. Yeah, See, this, work, this yeah. is what happens on this show all the time, guys. For for you, just another sidebar here. I have to reveal so much about myself, uh, generally speaking, that I would rather not talk about. But somehow it comes out, and uh, I get to hear it back. So welcome to the club. All right. So you, it's innocuous. It it, it sort well, of uh, smooths things over. Well, it, it, so in some ways, maybe maybe it's. Um, Maybe it's a bomb, a salve mm-hmm. okay. in a way. Okay. And so maybe part of the the reason it's that it uh, that that it has some um, some cachet at the moment is that you know, people can run to that because it's it's it, it has a certain level of comfort. Yeah, yeah. So everything's out of control. The world's kind of spinning away from where we want it to be. Here's something we can go to and quiet Just, yeah, down, like it's a, a quiet place. Taking it's the a little time like out, the uh, film version of a donut, right? Oh. It's uh, something you eat for. Com- I don't know if you guys. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Krispy Kreme. You like those? those Krispy <laughs> yeah, Kremes? Well, I think so. Absolutely. I like uh, Jeff. You know, what do you think, man? Absolutely. Krispy Kreme too much. Yeah. All right. All yeah. right. Yeah. I could, sure. uh, you know, I could. Uh, I, the, the, I, I dream of eating a Krispy Kreme the size of a life preserver. You know, like okay, just, oh, yeah, like uh, and then yeah. you found you ate your pillow. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, we'll yeah, that's old that's joke. Feathers right? yeah, anywhere? Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Actually, yeah. Actually, I was gonna say I ate my um. My uh, uh, hemorrhoid pillow, but that's <laughs> 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 the right size. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. I First didn't. of all, the fact that you know what a hemorrhoid <laughs> pillow is. Well, okay, there we <laughs> that's, go. That's that another my, story, uh, another time. <laughs> uh, my nickname in high school: <laughs> hemorrhoid <laughs> pillow. <laughs> I had it tough. It's not easy yeah, being me. Yeah, getting picked on a <laughs> lot. Right. But 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 so but you're sort of saying though that you think that there's something about now. <laughs> That there is that there there's this need for drama. There's this need for intensity, right? That somehow that we live in an age right. that um, is that is that the dog or the tail? Because um, mm. twenty four yeah. hour news right. cycles and mm-hmm. and um, uh, twenty four hour news consumption, social media, all these things demand. There's a thing called the attention economy. You guys have heard of that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Attention. And nothing mm-hmm. will give you a bigger share of the attention economy. Than, than drama, right? Right. Then you know, yes, it's yes. all about the clicks. Right. So it's it's it, yeah. so in some ways I think that if you know that social media is sort of made um, has sped this up to some degree, and the writer of the article, the Salon article, I, it, it, what I think they were attempting through through sort of a PC lens, they may have been a little been clouded by their own sort of. Uh, political stance. Yes, and don't let that point go because uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we want to come back to that. Keep your thought, but, that, 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 but the idea important. of, okay, now I'm going to expose this, I'm going to write about mm-hmm. it, and guess what? You're talking about how you feel and you're pushing yeah, that you know, they're not, they're not enough diversity, not enough sexual diversity. It's not enough. I'm, I'm the good guy over here <laughs> and all and you guys. That, yeah. and that, was in the, that was in the article. But I, I, I think if, if there was something, and, and this, this is something you do in therapy, if somebody tells you something, if somebody comes into your office and they sit down and they start going off on the most horrible racist rant, you know, yeah. let's say they go on and on about, you know, how much they hate Samoans or something. I don't know. They're just going on and, and you're, you're appalled by the statements they're making. Sure. But your goal as a therapist is to find something in there that, is, that has use. What, how does racism work for them? There's some part of what they're saying and expressing that is reflective of some emotional concern they're attempting to deal with 
through this diatribe. So, so you want to look for the truth and the grain of truth, not about the things they're saying, racist things are, are, are not true, but how it works and what they're attempting to bring into the world and for you to see by the things that they're doing. And if you can lean in enough, you can often find that and find a way to bring it into the room. And it will be the same for this article. There's something a concern for how society they would like society to move in certain directions and it doesn't appear to be so and what i think sparked this article is that i don't know if you realize this but there was a they originally aired a commercial of two women mm -hmm. it was a brief vignette of a, a larger commercial where two women were kissing because they were getting married right. and it was very chaste it was like you know like it wasn't like a, a it wasn't sexual at all but there was a kiss and uh, there was a christian organization called one million moms which yeah. turns out there's actually, it's 1,237 moms. There's not a million moms. So oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, well really it, it sounds much better if you say 1,237, <laughs> 1, no, you're not going to. They're called okay. a million moms. Okay. And um, They wish. Yeah. They're, 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 they've, they've got, got goals. They got, <laughs> exactly. Everybody got should goals. have goals. Right, right, right. But, uh, Though I'm not sure if their goals are all that great. but And so they said that, you know, that you should take this commercial off because it allows sex to enter into a place where you shouldn't. And let's, you know, let's keep this out of, we should have one arena where it's not offensive or whatnot. Now, I don't know if you, you should watch the video because it's right. it's just like a Hallmark movie. It's remarkably inoffensive. This is not okay. two women wearing bikinis, you know, right, uh, right. putting olive oil on each other. This is not... Right. Uh, it's nothing like that. It's this not is, a porno film. It's <laughs> literally just, you know, and, but they became really upset. And so Hallmark pulled the ad. Yes. And, but then unpulled the ad. Mm -hmm. so, yes. That, that's, it, the, you know, <laughs> at that point, the boardroom has not decided not, on what a well, plan if is. If I were here, on the we're, boardroom, and I can only imagine what Hallmark's boardroom would be like, but I imagine it's lots of people um, in beige. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, who smell like Bed Bath and Beyond? Yes, yes and yeah. I'm just saying that's not going to be a, you know they're, they're they're not a there's there's not a uh, there's not a neck tattoo among the bunch of them. No, you know? okay. no, no, no piercings. No, no piercings. No piercings that no. This is a really so I can only imagine how they really hashed that out because you okay. know it's like. Yeah, I can imagine the Hallmark boardroom. There, there are people in the Midwest who would look at the that they would look at as being too, you know, too radical. Too it's, radical. It's they need, a, <laughs> need to so, spice it up a little so, bit so, there. But their decision was to bring it back, and I bring think it back. That sparked something. So and by the way, this is a commercial. Right, that we're right, talking right, about. Right. This is it's not commercial. a yeah, yeah. It, Jeff, it's not a show. That's, no, uh, no, you and it was watch just for an hour. It's a, it's a passing commercial in between. 13 other commercials. And this was just right? a little piece of the commercial. It was mm. just like in the background. Yeah. Well, but it if I could be it, right? Freudian for a sense, uh -oh. can I? Can I? Can oh, I really? please do. Yeah, we <laughs> haven't been able to stop you yet, but go ahead. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because <laughs> it's interesting because um, if this were a man and a woman um, at their wedding and they kissed each other, no one would say that it was sexual and shouldn't be brought into the arena. No one sure. would take a child out of the room if sure. that were to happen. But there is something uh, about, and I'm, I'm going I'm to get in trouble by saying this. Go ahead. Can I say it okay? There's All something right. about the conservative gaze that sometimes imbues sexuality and perversity where it isn't. Mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. it says something more about the gaze than the thing you're looking at. Because right. what they see when they see that is, and for instance, this is what often goes around the conflict around gay marriage. And whatever your thoughts about the morality of it or whatnot, there are all sorts of ways to think about it. Right. But the goals behind gay marriage were, were inevitably be for two people of the same gender to be able to have a family. Yeah. Right. That was the goal. Yeah. It's not so they can have more sex. Right. It's not because they, if we could end gay marriage, then they would be doing horrible things in the bedroom that we'd be forced to have to watch. Do we have to watch? Because that's not what it was. Because no. I got news. They were already doing those things. That's right. There was no need. But the gays of the individuals looking at this see that instead of what it actually is. This is not about right. sex. This is no. about the possibility of union. Yeah, right. And so it's interesting that that is what find its way, finds its way into the discourse. They saw this as sexual and mm -hmm. perverse. And mm -hmm. most folks, in fact, I would say most a significant number of conservative Christian folks who a million moms were, were probably representing wouldn't have even batted an eye at this. It would have been 
Okay. Yeah, there's well, some yeah. sort of yeah, acceptance, exactly. uh, at not least yet. a little. Exce- yeah, or, so, okay, you know, okay, you know, it's what that, you know, whatever. But for them to see in this, you know, this, this, uh, uh, it, it says something about, it's a little like if you, uh, there have been a number of instances of televangelists who have come out railing against homosexuality and how horrible it is and then you find out three months later they're caught with a pool boy yes right, right? yes right <laughs> literally oh, very <laughs> freudian right there right, again there, yeah it, yeah there is an attempt to be able to not deal with something by dealing with it through projection mm-hmm. yeah. and, mm-hmm. and it, over projection if there's such a word right but, and so uh, you know the answer might be to the one million mom folks is you know um you know, maybe uh, maybe you should talk to your therapist about this, or uh, you know, I'm not sure. And this is with you know, even outside the realm of morality. I mean, you can still have all sorts of views on what you think is right and wrong, and and what sort of values you want to hold to. Right. But there's their their response to this just seems to suggest that there is there is there is something inside their hearts that has, they have yet to address. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if that connects to anything with what you were saying about culture at large, but mm-hmm. I think that's the filament of truth that the Salon article is trying to address. Like, is it possible that the folks, a good percentage of the folks who watch Hallmark movies, are the same sort of people who don't know their hearts? The same sort of people who have a secret conflict, a secret hatred or self hatred? that these sorts of movies numb them to and that if they were exposed to something else besides the comfort food then maybe there's a chance for them to grow oh. so what if these movies you know and that's the fascist element i think like if yeah. you look at uh, triumph of the will and uh, those sort of not uh, fa- fascist propaganda films right. even some of the propaganda films out of stalinist uh uh, uh, uh russia and whatnot uh, the um there's something about how they serve the purpose of keeping someone blind and numb to something they may need to know. Yeah, but that's okay. most of the broadcast okay. television. Just a couple things. First, broadcast television is about the dollar. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it's largely reality shows, bride shows, food shows, uh, surviving shows, but but it's comfort food because it's the same show over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. So yeah. so if if that's the if the point of the article is that <coughs> folks who watch Hallmark are not in touch with their own dark scary feelings, well you know that's most of humanity anyway, right? That's why uh, therapists stay in business. And then the second thing is, a lot of these issues we're we're sort of throwing on the table here. It seems to me like presently. We live in a in a society where we have all these ab- ways of communicating, but we're afraid afraid of really talking about the issues and taking a hard look at the yeah, issues. That's hence, a good point. hence, if you have a different point of view, well, you're just bad, because yeah. I don't want to I don't want to look at that. That's scary or weird or whatever. And most people, they have, even if even if their thinking is unsound, say, they have a rationale so that it works for them. I mean, that's at the heart of, of uh, talk therapy, is that when people bring these things into therapy, there's a, uh, they, the behaviors or beliefs they're engaging in, it does something for them, right? Right, and, it, well, and it's always they're bringing those things in, too, when uh, they've not found a way to talk about them. And oh, they're hoping and this therapist is going to get it, at least the un- underlying issues, I think. Well, doesn't that go along with the previous discussion we had about the myths that mm-hmm. people create. I was thinking that. Right. Yeah, yeah. It went right along with that. You create this myth, and you have to do what you can to reinforce that. Well, that's it gives how you comfort. See the world. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you have to protect it, right? Like once yeah. you've established a narrative for the world and your place in it, the cognitive dissonance, anything that comes along to right. challenge mm-hmm. that. Right. I mean, and you you have to be able yeah. to. And when you talk about that, that's therapy is unique in that there is the potential for real talk. I mean. One of the and I come from a psychoanalytic tradition, and it can be very powerful. The minute you walk in and you sit down and you say to your patient, "How how was your week?" or "What's going on?" and they say, "Fine," but you notice they say it in a way that would suggest that maybe it's not so <laughs> not fine. Okay, no, okay. Not so okay. Right. yeah, it's great. Yeah. And the fine. mere <laughs> the mere fact of saying, you know, I, the words "fine" came out of your mouth, but the music behind that sounded more like a horror film. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. 
what's going on there? Yeah. And well. that opens up the possibility for real connection. <laughs> right. To be, and to be able to say, why do you feel the need, even in here, to pretend to be something you're not? Notice how that can open up a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, throughout the, all of your week, you have attempted to wear a mask, and in the one place that we know it's okay, it's not to, it's still hard for you to take that you off. You still have sure. the mask. Sure. So, well, I, yeah. I, did, I wanted to say something about sort of the context, mm -hmm. because I think now as we've moved into this social media world and information flood, uh, the floodgates are open, and we're all exposed to everything all the time, so to speak, that um, we've we bought into this anonymity, this idea that I can say something uh, you, and I can put a different name on it or I can be a part of a group, and I don't have to take responsibility for what I really want to say. And uh, uh, so I think this context that we're in, allowing people to say it, use fascists and those terrible words that we were just mm -hmm. talking about, and go to the extreme on it with no consequences for that. But if you're in a one-to-one, face-to-face -to -face kind of situation and someone says that, you're going to have a different reaction. But if you're online, you can just float these things out. <laughs> Part of a group. Good point. You okay. can send a bunch of emails, and you get your friends to send a bunch of emails, and and uh, so it almost makes it okay mm -hmm. to be in one extreme direction or, or another. I, I, I was just going to ask a question, though. When we go back to the Hallmark situation, are we saying that they are really perpetuating a myth of what life should be or what life is, and this little commercial? was maybe bringing some reality in. in interrupted it in some yeah. way, yeah. I, I think that probably, considering the folks who are making the Hallmark movies and mm -hmm. some of the actors are probably openly gay, probably there's a tremendous amount of diversity in the industry that generates this. Yep. So the actual manufacturer of these films would be just, would be, uh, they're like, I mean, it's, to them it would be no big deal. But you're right, the consumers may or may not have a narrative that they need to protect. Okay. A, uh, in fact, one of the, the the response from the one million moms is, we need to have some area where it's safe for Christians. That somehow right. the public sphere is beginning to shrink. Okay. And this was the one safe place. Okay. For uh, for for folks who 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 could feel that. So. But yeah, that is some desperation in that. I, 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 it seems like you've got to find a space there because you feel the wall's kind of closing in. And it's well, but the irony changing is, the way and again, that this is, you know, again, I, I'm a lefty myth, commie, but, you know, I, I don't remember Christ himself hanging out with um, people in Hallmark movies. He tended to hang out, hung out with people who... We're real people. Yeah. We're, yeah. yeah. They're just real people. <laughs> they, yeah, they yeah. were... Yeah. It's not like, you know, I, I don't think... I, I can't imagine that there's... That there's nothing biblical about watching this. You, you could even you could even say, in my heart, in my religious beliefs, suggest that that is not something two people should do because it it takes them away from salvation. It it places their eternal soul in uh, in, in trouble. You could still have that, but still be present and honoring and connected to the people who are being presented there. I mean, there, there's 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 a way to be able to navigate that conflict, right? Well, when you get back to the New Testament principles, and the New Testament was a a radical change from the Old Testament point of view that in is so many true. ways. But uh, some of the key some of the key phrases were, uh, "Let he who is without sin cast the first stone." Uh, one of the others was, uh, "Judge not," mm -hmm. and and so, and you know, uh, when you think about what ultimately happened to Jesus, uh, he brought this message of love and acceptance and and loving your neighbor and including everybody. Well, you see where it got him. <laughs> uh, society at that point uh, was like, hey, that's not our Old Testament principle, and that's not our society. That's not the way we see things. Yeah, that's not the narrative or the myth that we have. Yes. That he was he was a uh, He was radical mm -hmm. uh, in in that sense and and you know it's often when you look back historically at the at the whole Jesus time and uh, the time of his of his preaching uh, according to the Bible 3 years. Well, those 3 years he brought a message of just pure love and it was so radically against the government and the uh, religious power in place that, you know, it got him killed. So, you know, 
Uh, I think a lot of times when we're talking about biblical principles, we miss the point, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, for me, uh, the whole idea of spiritual quest is to is to work on my own judgment. I mean, I'm like anybody, you know. I have my own perspective. I was raised in a, you know, a, a pretty conservative Catholic household, that kind of thing. And and you know, a lot of times I I have to ask who 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 is making this judgment? Is it really me? Is it me, my eternal self, or is it a, uh, uh, you know, just mm-hmm a myth that's created for me, right? Which, right, which you wonder, because that yeah. would be, you know, the myth that you were raised with. Yeah. That this is how it should be. That's right. And you don't know anything else. Right. You know, right. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, but people can seem to get really upset when they think it violates one of their beliefs or at some level, and they see that as offensive and that they need to kind of strike back in some camps. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. So, and if you've got a million moms or... 1,237, <laughs> then everybody's got to shoot an email out there and stop this stuff. But then, if this, if I remember the story, they reversed the decision. Right. What do you think that was about? I'm not really sure. Uh, if you're going to say, okay, you persuaded us, uh, what happens in the meantime to that? Is that money? Is that just greed oh, or what? I, well, I, I don't, the, there I don't was know. so much backlash <coughs> when they pulled those and once people heard why they pulled those that they had to reverse that. Well, see, it goes to the heart of another American belief, which is the belief in free, freedom of speech. So which, so you're saying, okay, we're, go, we're going to pull this because somebody else says we should pull it. That's but right. But now uh, right. then you have a whole different political point of view that says, well, hold on. I've seen that even, even in uh, the university environment where uh, there should be absolute freedom of speech, yes. but only certain kinds of speech <laughs> right. and then other kinds of yes. speech are that's right. you know so that shouldn't be so, so free so that shouldn't be so free <laughs> and it sort of goes like to the old orwellian uh you know concept of all animals are equal but some are more equal you than know? others yes. and, and, and 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 everybody engages in that kind of hypocrisy to some degree so it's on a continuum but but when it comes down to those questions i keep going back to if we really believe in an enlightenment point of view, an enlightened point of view, then in, an enlightened point of view comes from throwing everything on the table and hashing through it and then deciding where you as an individual are and then where you as a, as a group are ultimately going to go. Mm-hmm. That's true democracy, but it's, you know, it sort of it's goes difficult. back to the old expression. It's like making sausage. It's, uh, you know, it's good when it's done, but, it's you know, the a, making of it isn't all that great. It's not a yeah. speaking yeah. Yeah. Not a right. process. Right. Yeah. Well, right. Well, in some ways, because if you think about what you're saying, so the opposite of a borderline state, which is splitting, when you talk about this mm-hmm. need for drama, all good go. and all bad. Mm-hmm. Jeff, the opposite, they're using those psychology terms yeah, again. I just want to yes, make yeah, sure yeah, that yeah. you're... I'm taking notes. Brother. All right, there you go. Though I can't because he's got my pad. Yeah, I don't really know what they mean, but I use them because they sound smart. <laughs> well, well, the opposite of that is, is some, uh, and the fancy term for that is the depressive position, and it's being able to see shades of gray. It's a form of integration. And so you can see how splitting works on this very article, and, it, and it's split to the left and the right. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have the one million moms saying this is perverse, this is, you know, whatever, and and, and that is hurtful. That That's not helpful. That's not no. loving. No. But we also, when I say this as a left-leaning uber commie, that Salon also involved engaged in some splitting because if you read the article, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to sound too critical, but you could hear a whiff of elitism in the article. Mm-hmm. Those dumb bunnies who watch Hallmark movies. Yeah. They're yeah. so, right. you know, like, uh, and I don't think that's helpful either. No, I don't think it's helpful. No, 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 I, I don't no, think, I, I, I do think there's another, there, there's, people in the boardroom that are saying how much is this costing us or how much controversy can we get out there and sell more magazines their brand would be really in trouble but but i suspect there's also and because i i am i'm not cynical enough but i suspect there are also people on the board saying wait a minute we wanted to include that commercial because we really want more people at the table 
We want right. people to feel accepted. We think we have movies that make people feel good. Doing it for the right reasons. And we in want some ways, as many yeah. people to feel good as possible. If sure. I'm selling donuts, sure. I would like everybody to have one of my donuts because I think you're going to like this thing, right? So I think on some level that's probably a play. But if we were to come at this from bringing it back into the therapy room, consulting room, the opposite of borderline state is that integration. And the goal would be, like, if somebody's protecting their narrative and their story, right. one of the goals you get to have them to do is to be able to lean into their pain without right. too quickly needing to split and project it off. So to be right. able to say, if we had one of the one million moms in the room, to be able to say, okay, what is it about this commercial that causes you so much pain? Sure. This obviously hurts you. We don't start with saying, you know, you unenlightened, uh, you know, yeah. fascist. race, fascist, <laughs> whatever. That's not going to help. Keep those to yourself it's over not, there, it's, right? You know, not going to help. But you could begin with saying, okay, what about this bothers you? And if they could articulate, then it may help them with tolerance. Doesn't mm -hmm, mean they right. have to mm -hmm. accept it, mm -hmm, but they can tolerate right. the fact that there is now a place at the table for, uh, uh, for sexual diversity. There was a time when two women kissing on TV could get you killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now we have a place where they have a place at the table. What about this makes you feel, and she might, I would imagine, she would say something along the lines that, I'm feeling marginalized. I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling there's not room at the table for me anymore. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And if she were able to say that, we could work with that. Mm -hmm. And we might even say, well, you know, I think you're kind of right because there are people at the table who've been hurt. And they think you are the person that hurt them, and they would like to get revenge. They would like to take out some of their pain on you. So let's find a way to make sure that we all have a place at the table. And some of those, because there is some truth to that. I, I don't mm -hmm. think it is simply just, you know, um, uh, all smoke and whistle for, for the one million mo moms not to feel some of the things that they feel. Am I wrong? Am I I can see what yeah. you're saying. No, yeah, I, yeah. I, no, I no, think, no. I think one there's one a threat of, there. Yeah. One of the, I, and again, it's context, but but uh, being insulated in a group situation allows you not to have to do any of the things you just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm free from having to explore my own feelings right. or my hurt or my pain and kind of grapple with it in light of someone else's hurt and pain and how do we compromise in those things. But if I'm in a group and I can fire off some ugly note to someone without any repercussions, then I never have to deal with it. And look, I've got more supporters. And uh, mm -hmm. it insulates you from having to deal with those things. And so I think that's part of the split that we've been feeling with now. And, it, and the fascism piece of it is always about making the other side terrible. You know, we do it in every war. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the gooks well, the, and all those the, terrible right, things you, know, you the talk Nazis, about people. Right. They, they had what called, they had the figure of the Jew. They had this yes. this individual, this group of individuals that somehow, if we can get rid of them, we would get our utopia. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And if if you have that, oh, we had a we had a, <laughs> a a episode about a movie that had those kind of principles in it not long ago, if you remember. What, 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 that was uh, what was that. Uh, that Care Bears movie. You know what that was? Uh, no. that was, <laughs> that was, that was but, but it's you're right. So and if part of fascist and, and you you can see a little bit of it. And you know we can drift in that way in contemporary politics. That somehow there is um, if we could only get rid of immigrants, America would be better. That's we'll right. We'll go back to be where it was. Oh, whatnot. you bet. Right. Right. So exactly. We're always trying to get back to somewhere, yeah. and then we need to talk about that at some point too. Which, well, by the way, we talked can't about go this. back home. You know, did, did I keep you? bringing these things ago. back the, the, up. This, yeah. the, what, what, one of Hitler's uh, sound bites literally was "Make Germany Great Again." I mean, literally. That's yeah. Was the whole yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, well, and it's part of what can can the specter of fascism often is that there is there is a um, a past that never existed. That we're being blocked from because a certain section of the population is keeping us from it, and okay. so we can mobilize against. It's just this so minority. much easier to blame outward than mm. to deal with the things inside, and um, that that is. Uh, well, you know, it's it's, it's it's all football, isn't it? So <laughs> so uh, <laughs> all right, let's bring, let's bring here we go. Here we go. Bring the coach so, in. <laughs> so so coach. first, it's a it's a classic it's a classic power move where you create a either some catastrophe is coming our way or some evil group is coming our way and if you'll just support me you know then uh we'll take care of this and and the reason i said it's football mm -hmm. is because i've all, always watched these uh 
interstate rivalries closely. They're exciting, but if you if you talk to one group, the other team always is just full of dirty players They're and cheaters. Cheating. Yes, <laughs> a lot Gosh. of dirty play, yes. violence. Oh, oh don't Our you team know? Yes. Is, is fair play, no violence. You know, we're, we're the good so, people. <laughs> so I, again, I, I think you you got to look. So what is and it's and it goes back to therapy. What is what is that kind of behavior getting folks? If it's folks in power. Who are creating that dynamic and they don't say if a leadership team does not say what are the issues let's hear from everybody and let's come up with a game plan if it's all i got a game plan because that's what's happening i, I always put my hand on my wallet i mean i just i, I think there's uh, my, some tax dollars involved and uh, i'm going to pay and somebody's going to get my money so well, well think about it because because there are two, two things sort of reply first off i would think that could you imagine a presidential debate where somebody said, you know what, you got a choice between the two of us, and it's going to be okay with you, whichever you choose. America's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Things are going to be okay. I just happen to think that my you know, idea is a little better, and here's how they might work. What, what if that ever happened? That never, sure. oh, no, no, no. Sure. <laughs> that was like, you know, you know, we're all going to be okay. And, you know, by the time you get to this level of the voting, we've been vetted in all sorts of ways. If either one of us were really a bad person, we wouldn't be here. We're all pretty okay, okay? So it's not, not, nothing to be worried about. <laughs> so, so in but political debates now, instead of that, what you get is, you're evil. Yes. You're <laughs> evil. Hey, we're the same oh, party. We're both socialists. Evil, you know. I mean, it's it's, it's yeah, bizarre. Yeah, let's find it's the entertaining. Word that is make you know, it. I'm but entertained see, but, but, by and, it. And that's know? the second point because I think in football and maybe in Hallmark movies, it's good that we have splitting, because in football we have a place where we can take all these parts of ourselves that we're never going to be going to therapy to integrate. Well, there you go. <laughs> but we have a place where, for a certain amount of time, your neighbor can sit across from you in a stadium or whatever. The, uh, well, I, we moved into our new house, and apparently the my the two neighbors one of them was a georgia fan and one of them was an auburn fan and so they had this um when we went to look at the house they had this um this arms race of football memorabilia they would display you know and so <laughs> it was like, the yard, you know like right? there would be all these things and i've I, got I, a banner well i've got a blinking <laughs> sign right. yeah right what uh -huh. was great about that is it, it allowed them a place <laughs> to hate each other culturally so they didn't hate each other any other way so it was like an outlet. Right. It's like, not yeah, bad. that makes sense. You go there, you experience yeah. these experiences. So maybe we need borderline spaces. We need to go to the movies, and the bad guy and is really a bad guy. He's even twirling his mustache, and he's just <laughs> bad, right? Yeah. We need that. that guy. We need Hallmark movies where, you know what? It's all going to work out in the end, right? It's all, so maybe we need these things. Maybe not in politics so much because that's dangerous. And you're right. It, we end up – somebody's going to end up paying. Trust me. Somebody it's going to cost us. Usually all of us except for the person running yes. uh, and his friends. But uh, we need these spaces. And so part of, you know, um, if you want to call that level of splitting somehow fascist, then we need a little fascism now and again, right? <laughs> Okay, a little fashion. But I can see that. I don't that. know if I can, I can figure point, this out. Though. Jeff, help me out. No, no, I can really see that point. Where that might like be a little bit pregnant. <laughs> kind of, a little bit I didn't fascist. see it that way. Yeah. It's more of like trying something else on and, and, and seeing how that would be. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It's a cathartic experience. Yes. In well, other not, words, not, it goes back to the whole uh, uh, Greek concept of catharsis and and feeling the emotions so that you purge yourself of the emotions so then you can be the enlightened human being, right? You know? Yeah, and I also think we're grouping people together in these groups that probably sh they don't belong in the same group or, or maybe there's a, a, a gradation uh, of uh, uh, that, that occurs in the group so not everyone feels as strongly about this as some of the others do, but it's almost like we accept it as one group think everybody's doing thinking in the same way and that's not true with any group so for me it's got to come back to the individual you get them in therapy maybe we can talk about this you got 1237 potential clients <laughs> so that, was that are not that <laughs> are not going to go in for therapy oh, no, because no, no. there's nothing wrong with them that's right, right. Well, it's yeah. the rest of the world that's immoral and, and that's how splitting works, right? You, yes. you project your own badness into the world, and you're okay. Somebody yes. else has it. Yes, it's, exactly. So it. it works. I know. You know, I it's see not it. a because I mean, people. If we go back to it, what's the old there, there's a say uh, uh, 
how long in a conversation for, before somebody brings in Nazis? I forget the term for that. But there was a term. <laughs> but go back to the Nazis. They've got a time limit. You know, Somebody's <laughs> got to bring it up at a, you know, by this time, right? Hitler, he didn't think he was evil. No. Stalin. He was trying to save them. Right. And Stalin, <laughs> who did horrible things, literally said, I've got to do this because if I don't, the human race is doomed. I've, I've got to save them. Right. So okay. th there was not an indication, you know, and it, it th they were driven. There was a lack of moral complexity, <laughs> but they certainly had a moral outlook. And, and yes. they were they were laser focused on that. And, and maybe that goes back to the narratives and the stories, because mm -hmm. particularly with the Nazi ideology, there was this notion that there was this wonderful Germanic tradition and that, you know, the Enlightenment was born from, uh, from, from uh, German thought and Ar Aryans. And purity. And yeah, that's yes. right. And we, we, we have to keep it pure so we can keep going, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Well, you know, that yeah. article had quotes. It had uh, Nazi references in there. So the writer... Um, had brought up uh, Goebbels. Or, yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, yes. and, and that, yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, okay, you want to make your point, but you have to bash <laughs> us over the head so hard. I yeah, mean, come on, I think yeah. we're well. there. I think we get the point. But it's the extremism, I think, that, that rouses us. And, and maybe, like you said, Dr. Hackett, uh, it gets more clicks. So if we're controversial and it's out there, oh, did you hear about this? And click, here we click, are click, talking click. about yes. it on the podcast, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And how much of that is hyperbole, too? You know, in other words, I'm making a point by making it extreme. You know, it's almost right. the, the opposite of uh, parody. I'm know? wondering if some of these magazines, can we find a group that is really outraged about whatever the topic is? Oh, there's one. Let's yeah. call them up and get them a, get a statement from them, and let's write this article. Well, so and, I'm one of those doubters. i got to know what's going on behind There's even an article. Scenes. It came from, um, I think it may have been the National Review. It was a pretty conservative magazine. Uh, or it may have been um, American Spectator. I can't. May, I think American Spectator is more to the right, John Birch Society kind of stuff. But and, and there was an article about how horrible Mr. Rogers was. That it was a secret plan to feminize and take away masculinity so that there That's could be this. There. <laughs> I mean, the, the, no, 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 <laughs> and they were going on about you know how horrible Mr. Rogers. Actually, I think it was. Um, it was both an article and someone talking on Fox News. And so they're going on about, you know, Mr. Rogers and how horrible he was and, you know, all these sorts of – and um, – Gosh. Th th they're probably – you could probably find someone outraged about anything. Anything. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely yes. anything. I need to sell something. Let me get some controversy in Well, the, the, right. the last – the Salon article is this week's big controversy. The one last week was the Peloton commercial. Yeah, and, I, and yeah. I never did. I never did get exactly. Didn't what was quite going get on that there. one. What I, didn't get, I didn't get what anybody was mad about. I mean, it was uh, uh, somebody gets a Peloton for Christmas. All I thought was two thousand dollars. That's pretty. That, that's that's right. pretty yeah. pricey, yeah. bro. So but, it always but goes but, back to the oh, dollars. Yeah, for me, for me, it does. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but, uh, you know, when I saw the Peloton ad, I thought it reminds me of Diamonds Are Forever. I mean, the way the end of that commercial. Every kiss was, begins with yes, K, yeah, exactly. or ends with K, or something. Yes. He went to Jared. Same thing. You yes. know, I don't know. Okay, you guys are victims of all of that advertising. Propaganda. Say, See, we're yeah. consumers of it. Right? Yeah, maybe we maybe are, we're the ones really. that are susceptible to the propaganda. Right. I think we need to yeah. think through what's going on and what people are putting in our face and why we're reacting to things. Because, uh, yeah, we could be victims of of the. Uh, this environment that but, but but even that Ed, and i don't and i'm with you I, I i tried to follow that and i even tried watching the commercial but it just seemed at best banal <laughs> and at worst i'm right. not sure how this is going to sell anything but hey right yeah but <laughs> exactly I, it didn't it We're, didn't raise my eye what are we selling <laughs> i mean uh, if I really want to get upset, I go to YouTube and watch a Prager University, Prager University YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Those, <laughs> those, are, will, yeah, those, those get me right. Those will get you. Those <laughs> will get you. <laughs> well, I think with the Peloton, I mean, it was about a man getting the woman, his wife, a an exercise bike for Christmas. So that she would hey, lose weight. Hey, you need to lose. Yeah, that's was, the was that, the Was that, that the message? I think that was I the message. I just thought it was, it was a nice gesture. It was yeah. sexist in that way. I bought I my wife an exercise bike for Christmas. This is no lie. Really? I just did. You, you telling me I'm 
have some sort of fascist? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're, 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 on you're looking side. for trouble, try, mister. Trying to tell you. <laughs> so you, you I mean, trying you, to tell you. you, you wanna, you're, you're the progressive kind of left-leaning guy, but you've engaged in the very kind of behavior <laughs> that is uh, I, and I, the antithesis of your point <laughs> of view. I mean, the exact uh, opposite. I've forgotten Your behavior works, and what you're yeah. talking about is yeah. different. You know, but, you yeah, can lose so a few but, but here's what I... Is says, it, there, I can lose 180 pounds. I'm getting rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's exactly what happened in the Peloton. Really? And now she's in another commercial for vodka or something. Really? With that, Gin. that yeah. same yeah. sort of drab, sorry, <laughs> that same sort of look <laughs> about her. And, uh, and she's selling. But what I really like about it, and this is just purely for my entertainment purposes, but uh, when these things come out, then Twitter lights up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the guys who want to take a joke, and perseverate on something and make right. another joke and another joke and just extreme. Becomes and I, a meme. I actually, yeah. and it becomes yeah, a meme. It and I, I get <laughs> yeah. entertained by that. And I'm sorry. I apologize to the universe. <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, there's room for that, too. It's funny because as we're talking about this, I can see where the stories that we, that we tell ourselves and that we protect through splitting and projection often keep us from an emotional truth that we may really be starving for, right? Mm, right. One of my favorite cats is Wilfred Bion, and he says that, um, yeah. that we, uh, good point. We, 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 we need the food of the truth, and we will starve if we don't get it. And a mind that is cut off from that withers. And so I could see that any time, like, and I gave an example of Prager University, and oddly enough, I have watched a number of those, and they're not geared toward me, trust nope. me, but I watch them. <laughs> and they often make me really upset. And the goal would be, my first, when I watch one, my first response is bunch of regressive morons <laughs> with their, you know, whatever. And so you can literally see me attempting to whatever emotional truth is embedded in this experience. I am quickly an attempt to maintain my own sense of personal right. narrative and history. You know, right. I am here and they're down here. I literally, yeah. as opposed to saying, okay. The person went to a lot of trouble to make this, and part of it may be to troll me, but I don't think so. There's something about this that's important to them. Can I find the heartbeat in this, underneath all this? And then if I can listen to theirs, I also might be able to hear mine, and there's the potential for us to be able to meet somewhere in there, right? Right, mm. right, right. I think that, you know, like uh, um, I was talking to a family member over and a section of my family are very conservative and you know uh, at one point they were talking about paying off student loans and you know um, there's a program that under the Obama administration mm -hmm. where um, if you work in a counseling center you get your loans paid off and so uh, we were talking about it no oh, okay and Good to uh, know. she said uh, she said oops. family member said you know well it is really expensive paying these things off and it's her way of saying like you know I don't really support this mm -hmm. mm. and if she were to say to me a uh, family member were to say to me um, I worry that this is one more thing that gets us in debt and has the potential to keep us from growing in the ways that we need to. And so I worry about this. We could have that conversation. Yes. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. sure. and, and if I could hear in that as opposed to because I think if I caught her at family member in the wrong moment she might say well this is another one of those progressive socialist things where you don't want people to take responsibility for the decisions they mm -hmm, made and you're mm -hmm. just you're turning a, the whole generation <laughs> right. to into infants right we're going down the going tubes now. Yeah. 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 and at that point i'm like i can't hear <laughs> but, if, but, if, but if i could hear the heartbeat in it and yeah. then i could hear mine i could say wait a minute okay there, there's some place we could meet here to be able to deal mm -hmm. with this but Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, you know, for me, it, it's um, th that that ability to see that, react to it, and then, as you talked about many times, is to lean into it and see what is in that kernel in there that I can find to connect with and so forth. I don't think that's happening that much. I'm, oh, no. I want to I just say, Jeff, what do you think? Oh, I, mean, I totally agree with you. We don't want to find that kernel in there because we still want to protect that yeah, and, and, and it's, re or, it, you know, it's reactive. It's, yes, re it's automatic so. in a way yeah. that you have Just to somehow inter out of hand. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the, but the, there is something at stake. If we lose the stories that we have about ourselves in the world, okay, there is a price. There's the potential for chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at old learning theory, there's accommodation and assimilation. 
And assimilation is taking a bit of information and you, you literally just build it into the narrative you have. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But but accommodation, and this is what Beyond would say, that's the arrival of truth, requires you to have to rethink the way you think about yourself and the world. Oh, boy. And just from an evolutionary and biological perspective, if every time we woke up we were constantly having to accommodate we our ancestors, do it. yeah, we'd have been eating a long time. <laughs> we, we, wouldn't have, we would not have made no, it. No, you know, we would have, we would have, wouldn't be gated off the plains. <laughs> but so there is something important and necessary to be as assimilative as possible, and continually so. But whenever we have these sort of cultural shifts, and we, you know, we began talking about the Hallmark thing and its potential sure. for sexual diversity, and mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I remember uh, growing up as a kid, and if someone was effeminate, it was okay to call them homophobic slurs, and the adults yes. wouldn't say anything. No, no one would say right. anything. No, right. no adults right. might say no. that. I remember adults cracking jokes at other, oh, you yeah. know. So there has been a broadening of the table. There are now more people capable of being accepted and loved than there were. I've seen it in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. When I came to CSU, the first my first semester there, I wanted to do a uh, an LGBTQ group that was a gala group, a gay and lesbian association. And I was told by some administrators, I think that's too controversial. Oh that's, yeah, let's hold off for that. Controversy like, off the campus, right? About? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, now yeah. I can see it. We have these organizations <clears throat> in high schools all over the place. That's in just this brief amount of time in the twenty years we've seen this. So there has been on a cultural level a shift, but maybe it would be asking too much for us to move too quickly at that. Maybe yeah. it's something that that's... you know we have to stumble toward. Maybe, I think so. Uh, it's it's know. it's all it's all about this growth, where this this is slow moving society. Uh, or as Tom context. would bring in about this point would be evolution, that it takes time and we'd have to evolve there, and we're just not ready. The right? whole idea of the trajectory rises toward justice ultimately, mm -hmm. but it, it it's, it's just a time. Thing, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. growing pains, I yeah. guess, in this yeah. in this thing. But I also think there's less jokes um, in this uh, sort of <laughs> kind of calm and understanding and acceptance <clears throat> world. Um, so does it not yeah. have to be a little edge to I some of this? Sure, so sure, sure, sure. be okay. I mean, come on, can we, gotta, we not? We got to troll. We got to you know. We got to get you know. <laughs> we got. Uh, I don't you know. know. <laughs> not, uh, I mean, there are a couple of things I was going to joke about, but I thought, you know, I better not say these things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. I, I was okay. editing. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. editing during this I'm, thing. I'm, I'm, I, was, um, I was trying to stay classy. I am. I was like, really? oh, look at the, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Uh, stay classy. Uh, uh, what is it? All, all ships. What's that saying? All, all ships. Uh, the tide rises There's, all ships, right? Oh, yeah. Right. And so that we have two more people here. They've. I was a rising ship. Well, listen, I, uh, congratulations, oh, first of all, to uh, us for that, uh, and you for uh, holding back occasionally. Uh, <laughs> didn't see it that much, but uh, yeah, it was a good attempt. And uh, Yeah, I didn't yeah. see it that much either, really. But, uh, but, uh, Trust I, me, I, nice I thought for nice thinking thought. that. Yeah. That I had right? some things. There were yeah, a couple right. of things you were saying, like, man, don't say that. Don't say it. Don't Come say on. it. It's right there. That's good right that it's right even right. happening. <laughs> Golly. It's not. Don't do it! Don't do it! No, it's it's uh, it, it's it's really tough, and 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 the uh, cl politically correct environment. I mean, who navigates that very well? Um, and it's also generational in some ways. I mean, we got a lot of leftover stuff uh, that moves forward with us, and uh, well, have to undo some things occasionally. You know, I mean, lines. everyone here, at least at one point, worked at a university, and uh, as we all know, that is. Um, Ground zero for political correctness, right? It is literally. <laughs> it is. It is. The, it is more uh, today. <laughs> it is. Things it have is, changed. Things it have is, changed. It's not it like it used to be. It. And it's interesting because it, you would it, think it wouldn't be, but <laughs> it, it, you know, I, I've been in meetings where we're discussing, you know, a student or a certain situation, and, and I, we, I've, I've, I've heard an administrator, you know, that we, you know, um, this unit that what. Um, uh, referring to students who had, who had made a racist remark, you know, th this is not this university is no place for people like that. 
you know. Right. And <laughs> right. My, my thought is, you know. That can be applied in so many ways. Well, they, <laughs> yeah. they, the, the, the individual had made what could have been construed as a racist remark, and so it had caused some stir, and there was, you know, so we all were talking about what are we going to do about this thing. And, you know, um, I hate to say it, but, you know, it, it's, 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 it's not against the law to be racist. And it's not uh, in a place where there's freedom of thought. You're free to be as racist as you want to be. As long as you're not affecting somebody else in the privacy right. of your own home, you can put on clan robes or, you know, you and your friends want to do these things. That's, and I'm not sure if we can say that any element of the public sphere, including a university, is not a place for someone like that. As long as they can be respectful and we can expect them to be able to be, to honor and respect the people around them, wonderful. There's a wonderful clip. I remember seeing it as a kid. A local uh, 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 clan organization in, um, I think they were out of Chattanooga, and uh, they had made the news because they wanted to march, and um, they weren't being allowed to. And so their lawyer was there. So it was the clan man, and their lawyer was African-American. And he's saying, look, my, my clients have the right to this. And they turned to the clan man, and he said, well, you know, tell me about, he said, who, who is this lawyer? He said, oh, this He's the right man for the job. This guy is great. You know, we have full <laughs> confidence in him. He's really going to, he's representing us. And I was like, oh, what? my. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> How does this, How does this know, work? <laughs> but, but, you know, again, th- th- there, was, there was room for that. So when you talk about this notion of political correctness, I, I yep. think it is the potential for another form of splitting. Ah. We mm-hmm. have to be able to tolerate people who are repugnant. Who represent? You know, I, I and, and I'm. Gonna, this is going to be horrible. Cause, Come on, cause I'm going to take it, and you're all going to take offense. Thanks for uh, announcing in But I think eating meat is morally repugnant. Okay, I literally do. Yes, but I have do. to tolerate you bastards, <laughs> <laughs> and I will continue to. Yeah, yeah. and this is you'll worth defend it. our right to kill ourselves with ham. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I I have to deal with you. You know. I it, so <laughs> so but the, the goal is I have to be you thank, know, thank you dog that's we, we really appreciate, appreciate that. tolerance yeah. not sure about the word bastards but uh, <laughs> yeah. other than that, I think well, we're all right. well yeah. you know okay. and this is where Tom normally would say uh oh freedom of speech right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and people's ability to say what they feel yeah well okay all right you got yeah you're, you're you're on target again however I think it's especially using that university reference. Not so much tolerance anymore. No, in lots no. of ways, a professor can say something uh, in a classroom and they're out. Yeah, you know, tenure. Yeah. It, Jeff says often tenure's not what it used to be. It's, it's uh, not. <laughs> and uh, and so um, I'm thinking sometimes it sounds like that is the sort of the the great space for all of these. Uh, developmental things to happen. These these kind of progressive things to happen, and people to really have a voice. Uh, I'm not so sure. I wish it were. Well, but I, I remember so sure. when I was at UT. This was, this was in '85, '86. This was my first year at UT, and I would walk on campus, and there was a section of campus where, as you're walking between uh, UT Knoxville, it's huge, and there would be all these speakers, and there would be somebody on a stand, literally standing on a soapbox, talking about Karl Marx. And then about 50 feet from him would be this evangelical telling us we're all going to hell. <laughs> I remember him saying over and over again, if a woman can put a cigarette in her mouth, she can put anything in there. And I'm like, what the? So, <laughs> and, and literally every, every, and I'm like, it was like this melting pot of all these sorts yeah. of ideas. And yes. I was like, you know, okay, it's got to. Yeah. I, I, I will say, though, that I think that there's, there's still a grain of truth in this. There's an attempt to navigate how to keep people at the table that used to be marginalized and it used to be okay to make uh, to make fun of but at the same time create a space that people can speak about all sorts of things and it's true that a uh, because I, I work with students and um, uh, they'll often have a teacher who doesn't realize it but in act of speaking their opinion they often aren't aware of their their place there as an authority figure okay so yep. when they make yep. statements about that, you know, we, we've had professors at CSU who've made some um, remarks about, um, you know, uh, transsexual individuals or sexual diversity, and they'll right. make comments. Right. Not and just there, but a lot of places. It, it isn't yeah. that, that they shouldn't be able to say those things, but when they're up in front of a class and they command attention and authority, 
the words that they say mean something different than if they were standing on that soapbox on my way to class. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. 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 And I think yeah. that, but, sure. but so how do they, how can they still say these things? Because I think they should be able to say it. But also be aware of their place, the authority, and to be able to get this going. And I think that's, that's, that's the difficult part. And I can see where we often, we probably succeed more than we fail, but I've seen spectacular failures where mm-hmm. I've, I've seen um, either a student is not represented maybe the way he needs to be, and it, or I've seen where a faculty member or a staff member has suddenly been villainized Right. For just simply stepping, you know, it just happened to be Monday. That mm-hmm. this had happened on a Wednesday, no one about yeah, it. Yeah, right, 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 right. But it happened to happen on a Monday, so. Yeah, so it's, it's 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 really difficult to navigate all of this, and I think we have to have some level of I don't know understanding um, that uh, we all have these vulnerabilities. We all say the things that you shouldn't say or have these feelings based on our own experience, life experience, and culture and con context and so forth but hey we got to be we got to try harder maybe i don't know i think we need to try a little bit harder well, it, it, to there's understand a takeaway the other from all this. point of it, view it, and maybe this is a way to round it back to to our conversation in hand because this is what i'm I'll, I'll throw my two cents in all right go is it part of what's asked of us in these political correct conversations or hallmark or whatever i think it goes back to beyond's notion is we have to find a way to grow that um uh, there's a saying in the uh, that uh, you know that those of us who were, are not digital natives, we have what's known as a Gutenberg mind. We're used to the printed text. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Let's take a yes. picture of one of them right now. <laughs> there we go. All right, and back. <laughs> I'm not going to say, "Okay, boomer." I'm not going to do it. You almost <laughs> did. <laughs> I'm, it yeah, it's I'm too not late calling now. you a boomer. Okay. I think you did. And, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, going to get a meat sandwich right after this. All I right. hope so. Yeah, take that to Instead of bread, it's going to be like two pork chops with some with <laughs> meatloaf in between. With a, with a prime rib in the middle. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Nothing but meat. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. And your your colon just takes a look at that and just yeah. starts to. Yeah. Speaking of that, all right. So, but. Uh, uh, you see, you can't bring a certain group of guys together here and put mics in front of them. It's things that, happen. Those things happen. But but those folk, like my son, he has a digital mind. Like for him, a book is a very different thing. And so you can already see Antique. that he, he is built to navigate a space that I am already out of step in. Right. And so we're, we have to grow. I like that notion when Beyon says that we have to continue to grow the mind that we need for the world to come. And... Everything we're talking about to some degree is, is how we as a society and individuals grow to meet this world that's coming. Mm-hmm. And that's not easy. If there was a takeaway from this, uh, what is it? The, uh, there's one of my favorite lyrics from, uh, or maybe it's from the album liner note for one of my favorite uh, hardcore punk bands, Husker Du. Anybody a Husker Du fan here? Bob Mould, Grant Hart, any of those guys? Okay. Uh, no. Well, uh, it said, revolution right. should begin at home, preferably in front of the bathroom mirror. And so maybe the goal is, as individuals, we have to right. be able to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. find a way to own and navigate and attempt to understand our own emotional reactions. So maybe there is a personal need, and then as a group, to be able to do something better with the things that we feel. Maybe? Yeah. 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 I'm with yeah. you on that. Beyond. Uh, always good to bring up uh, Beyond. Well, I appreciate this discussion today. It's been uh, great, and uh, that's about it.